heading out across the Nullarbor Plain, Australia's big empty. Bordered by the Southern Ocean on one side and a landscape that flattens out to infinity on the other. Nothing much survives out here, but that wasn't always the case. Paint a picture of what life on the Nullarbor was like before humans arrived. He had giant kangaroos, a whole range of different species, ones that had really short faces, others that had long faces like modern kangaroos. There were marsupial lions. Just about everything around today had a giant equivalent back in those days. This land of giants included Procoptodon goliath, a kangaroo that reached up to three metres in height, dwarfing today's big reds, and a creature called a diprotodon, the largest marsupial ever to live. It was around about the size of a hippopotamus and we think they lived in herds. So it would have looked maybe something like um, the plains of Africa, maybe not quite so many um, animals, but really pretty unique landscape. And it wasn't that long ago, was it? Not really. You know, we're talking about only 40, 50,000 years ago, which is the blink of a geological, you know, eye, really. Climber coming down. Dr Gavin Prudeau has promised to share a precious secret. A paleontologist's paradise hidden beneath the sweeping plain that offers a glimpse into the past when megafauna roamed the Nullarbor. What is so special about this place? Just the, um, the preservation of the fossils is just amazing. Really, really well preserved. Because this is a time capsule, isn't it? It is a time capsule. It's exactly like that. This cave is so rich in fossils, few people have been entrusted with its location. Which is why I've been told to head to Mundrabilla Roadhouse on the Nullarbor Highway. Clay Bryce from the West Australia Museum will guide me in. Clay, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Glad you got here safely. Well, I think we're in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? Um, essentially, yes. Yeah, we're <clears throat> about, I don't know, 70 k's, 80 k's from the border, west of the border. And how much further from here in which direction? Well, due north, I guess, straight across the escarpment. It's nearly a three hour drive up the escarpment, then out onto the plain. There's no road maps, just mud maps. Blink and you would miss the cave. Don't get turn a torch on. That's a good point. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Rookie error. There's only that one on? way into the cave, and that's abseiling straight down. Okay, sit, just sit, sort of sit now. Now? Yeah, sit. Take your weight, and then just work yourself, your legs down here. It's nearly 20 metres to the bottom. Don't fall, don't become a fossil. Don't become a fossil. Thanks, Chloe. It's okay. nice and easy. Just watch what you're doing. Enjoy the ride. All right. Alrighties. Climber coming down. It's not only a cave, it's a tomb. For over a million years, this passage has been a death trap for any animal unlucky enough to fall in. Fortunately for me, Gavin Prudeau is waiting on the other side. Look at this. Pretty spectacular, isn't it? G'day, Gav. How are you? <laughs> nice place to catch up. The cave, called Liana's Breath, is one of Gavin Prudeau's favourite places on the planet. Just watch your feet as you're coming through here. It's not hard to see why. It's truly breathtaking. Amateur cavers discovered this place 11 years ago and came across an extraordinary fossil. They called in the scientists who had no idea what they were really in for. One skeleton, one lonely skeleton. So I came out here grossly unprepared. <laughs> and when we got down the cave, it was just like, I mean, before we even got to where the, the main skeleton was, there was over here, look at this, look at that, look at this. It was, the whole place is just a treasure trove. It was nothing like it in Australia has ever been seen. I doubt I'll ever be seen again, not in my lifetime anyway. 
It's probably a new genus and species. Wow, that's, uh, that's fantastic. fantastic. All about were the exquisite fossilised remains of animals who died up to one and a half million years ago. It really was like striking gold. So what did you think when you walked in and you saw this? Well, it was amazing, really. I mean, it's an awesome sight, truly. Um, and uh, just such a beautiful, beautiful place to work. And then when we actually looked around and saw skulls of extinct animals lying around on the floor and beautiful pristine bones, and then, of course, started digging um, in the sediment and finding that there were more bones of lots and lots of critters, many new to science. We knew at the time that we'd discovered one of Australia's most important fossil sites. This site is that important? Definitely. What Gavin Prado and his team are doing in this cave is basically rewriting the biological history of Australia. They've discovered the bones, the entire skeletons, of animals most of us have never even heard of, ranging from the huge to the bizarre to the downright terrifying. This creature is a Thylacoleo carnifex, the marsupial lion, the most fearsome predator to roam Australia. Just how powerful is that jaw? Well, it's been estimated that among all the mammal carnivores living and extinct, this had the most powerful bite of all of them. And it would have used these teeth, these huge blade-like premolars, like a, a pair of bolt cutters. It was, had a more powerful bite than saber-toothed cats or lions or tigers or anything like that. So it, was, uh, it would have been a formidable beast to come across. Pretty much top of the food chain. Absolutely. It was the apex. Um, carnivore in Australia. Can you imagine turning a corner and seeing one of these things? Uh, <laughs> in my nightmares, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> On its hit list, giant kangaroos and diprotodons, a creature shaped like a mega wombat. Back in his lab at Flinders University, Gavin is working on a freshly excavated skull. How big are we talking? Probably uh, size of a rhino, roughly. Maybe a little bit taller than a rhino. Um, two and a half to three tons. So nearly yeah. three tons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive animal Good and really gracious. widespread across Australia. Is this all that was uncovered? No, we've got a heck of a lot more. In fact, we've got most of the skeleton of this particular individual. And just over here, yeah. we've got um, the thigh bone or the femur <laughs> of, of the same animal. Look at the size of it. The size of that. I know thing. you would think if anyone found it, they'd instantly think dinosaur. Is it very heavy? It is. You want to pick it up? Sure. Are we going to do any doubt? Oh, Molly. The remarkable thing about megafauna research is that so much of Australia remains unexplored. But there is nothing easy about this work. Back in the Nullarbor, Beck Vato is sifting through the rubble Gavin and his team send up from below. So yeah. finding the big bones is the sexy stuff, but this is just <laughs> as important. Absolutely, this is um, maybe a bit more important because you're getting such a big concentration of lots of different species, um, and you can understand a little bit more about, you know, mm. what it was like on the Nullarbor, um, you know, a long time ago. So, yeah. How are you finding living out here for three weeks? I actually really love it. Um, <laughs> I, I, li I like camping. Um, 40 degrees. Stuff. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And millions of flies. <laughs> no, yeah, the flies are, yeah, just awful. But it's it's worth it. I mean, look where we are. Um, and the cave is just stunning. And we're finding some beautiful megafauna plus all these gorgeous mm. little creatures in here. So it's a bit like panning for gold, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah, the the gems get revealed. Oh, that's a bone. Is that a bone? Is that a baby bone? Yes, it is. Oh! I found my first bone! <laughs> what animal is that small? Would it belong to something? <laughs> what do you reckon? Some tiny critter. What do you reckon? A little bird or something? Let's have a look. No, it's a mammal. Yeah. It's a femur, so it's a thigh yeah. bone. Gavin can read bones the way the rest of us read oh, books. That tells me that it's from a rodent. So that's probably a stick nest rat. I caught a rat. I I first, my <laughs> first fossil I find belongs to a rat. <laughs> but in this game, persistence is everything. Keep digging 
and you never know what you will find. The size of this, look, this is going all the way back here. I know, it's a whopper of an animal. It's the pelvis of a giant extinct kangaroo. And it could be a million years old or more. Wow. This is 10 times better than finding a rat bone. <laughs> <laughs> Even I would agree with that. <laughs> But I mean, it makes sense. I can see why you love doing this when, you know, you brush away a little bit of dirt and something like this is uncovered. You never know what's under the next patch of dirt, you know. It could be nothing. It could be something spectacular. I mean, but you do know that if you find something, no one's ever seen it before. Mm. It's hard to imagine what this landscape looked like thousands of years ago with all that megafauna. Wombats the size of rhinos, marsupial lions, and giant kangaroos that would tower over today's mob. It's a pity to think that they're all gone. And it raises the question, what caused them to disappear? I think if people had never arrived in Australia, the megafauna would still be around today. If you think about it, 50,000 years ago, when they're arriving in a new land, there are all these giant animals around that you kill one, you can feed your family or several families for a week or two weeks or a month or something like that, then what would you do? Not every researcher agrees with this view, that humans were a major cause of this extinction. Burning and climate change are two other theories. But to Gavin Prideau, that's of less concern than the fact most Australians know more about the dinosaurs of North America than they do about the megafauna of Australia. And he wants to change that. Because we go to Africa to see the big game, but it was once upon a time right here. Absolutely, if we could time travel, we could see, you know, go on safaris and look at all the big game in Australia. You know, here you could, you know, see a pack of thylacoleos that had taken down a, you know, short-faced kangaroo, you know, eating the carcass and probably Tasmanian devils. Uh, which used to live right across the mainland, you know, sort of sneaking up and trying to grab some scraps. You know, there would have been probably a lot of, a lot of similarities, actually. Does it frustrate you that there isn't more awareness? It doesn't frustrate me. It, it motivates me. So mm -hmm. I'm really keen to, you know, for, for people to find out about these wonderful animals. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.